Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation we're going to look at the simulator called I Teach Resonance Shaft. Now as you may gather it's related to resonance, natural frequencies and so on and this is just one of a number of resonance related simulators and this one's to do with the shaft or rotor. So here it is here and you can see there's quite a few of them but we'll just look at this one here. Now what I can demonstrate in, in this particular case is here I'm looking at the shaft, the sort of the end of the shaft. If you imagine the, the rotor or the shaft is, is traveling away from us sort of into the screen. We're just looking at the end of it. And if we don't take any dynamics into consideration, there it is just spinning. But let's take the dynamics into consideration. And here uh, is the um, how the amplitude changes and the phase changes as it goes through that natural frequency right here. So what I can do now is change the speed. And if I increase the speed, speed of the shaft, the rotational speed, we see we're moving up closer to the natural frequency. Now it gets a little bit hard to see, so I'll just put it into slow motion. Uh, and you can see the, the red spot is the heavy spot. That's where the greatest uh, unbalance occurs. And the green spot is the high spot. So if we were looking at a time waveform vibration from this, uh, that is the peak of the time waveform that we measure. Now the little white line represents our phase reference. So I'm just showing that as a piece of reflective tape rather than a you know, key phase uh, notch. But uh, so we can see the phase delay between the red heavy spot and green high spot. And as we increase the speed of the rotor, the phase lag becomes greater. We can also see this as a Nyquist plot too. So it maps out a circle as we go through the natural frequency. And as I increase the speed slowly, if you look at the red line on the Nyquist plot, um, we slowly move forward. Then just as we get up to the natural frequency, there we go. So here we go on our um, Bode plot and Nyquist plot. The phase has shifted to 90 degrees. There's a 90 degree phase lag between the heavy spot and the high spot right there. We can show that in an orbit and sort of discuss, discuss that motion, but you can see that the heavy spot is that highest point out. If we were to physically look at a rotor like this, if we had a, a big rotor, flexible rotor on a balance machine or something, and we tried to find out which point is moving at the radius, it's not the heavy spot, it's the high spot. If we moved a bit of chalk close to that, that's where we'd see the chalk mark. That's the sort of extreme of motion of this shaft because it's acting like a flexible rotor now. Um, even though we're looking at just the end of it, we're not showing this as a true 3D because we would see this whole thing flexing like a, you know, in a first bending mode. But anyway, we can increase the speed of the rotor still further and now we increase the phase lag and if we in fact increase it all the way up much higher, we get close to the 180 degrees. And as you can see, there's the heavy spot where it you know, should be, right underneath the piece of reflective tape where it always was. But the high spot is now opposite. You can see that there's far less movement now, although we're modeling this as a single degree of freedom system, so it's a little misleading perhaps. But um, we're operating above the first resonance and or natural frequency, and you can see that we've got a 180 degree phase shift between the heavy spot and the high spot. So there are other things we can do with this, but that's the main point of this simulator, just to demonstrate that particular principle. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation and you thought the simulator was interesting. I hope maybe you may have learned something from it too. But thank you very much for viewing this presentation.